Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. We've got to get the Spetzlers to bed before midnight. They'll never cross the canyon. They're just having too much fun. Yeah. Oh, just don't sit down. Okay, here he goes. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you should do it in German. Can you, can you count in German? Yeah. Okay, good. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit down. Zehn, neun, acht, sieben, six, five. Vier, drei, zwei, eins. Thank you. Thank you. Tara? Notice how I bow out of the quieting people portion of the evening. Um, Dr. Sontag and his wife Lynn have generously given you all presents tonight. I just found this out myself. Those blue boxes on your tables are gifts from the Sontags and they are glass brains signed by Dr. Robert Spetzler. So, thank them if you see them, and I'll thank them now to the Sontags. Thank you so much. How's everybody doing? Are you Spetzlered out yet? Nobody here is on Spetzler overload. Not yet anyway, so that's a good sign. I have to say, I feel like we're actually, who's with me in thinking we're actually sort of on time and not running nearly as late as you thought we would when you heard there were a lot of speakers and doctors who have been not only respectful of the time, but funny? I don't know if they all were in speech and debate in high school, but they're good speakers. They're interesting to listen to. They have visual aids. Those are all things we learned in high school when you're presenting a speech. So I feel pretty good about the evening in terms of the length as well as other things. Our next guest, we'll see how he does with the uh, timing of it all. Our next guest is Dr. Daniel Barrow. He is the chairman of neurosurgery at Emory University. Dr. Barrow and his wife Molly are longtime professional friends or professional colleagues and friends of the Spetzlers. They've spent a lot of time together on bikes, so you know that involves competitions of some sort. They've been to New Zealand together and Italy together. I'm, I'm assuming they're doing the rim to rim to rim to rim to rim thing you guys are doing on Sunday. So please welcome to the stage another Dr. Spetzler lifelong friend, Dr. Barrow. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just glad to be up here after my roast on Wednesday night. I was afraid maybe I was disinvited, but um, it's a real honor to be here uh, to celebrate this with Nancy and Robert. This is Clostridium tetani a bacterial microorganism that causes the potentially lethal illness, tetanus. Infection generally occurs through wound contamination and then often involves a deep cut or a puncture wound. Primary symptoms are caused by a neurotoxin produced by this gram-positive anaerobic bacterium. Clinical manifestations of tetanus are caused when tetanus toxins block inhibitory nerve impulses preventing the release of inhibitory neurotransmitters. This leads to unopposed muscle contraction and spasm. As the infection progresses, muscle spasms in the jaw develop, hence the name lockjaw. This is followed by difficulty swallowing, general muscle stiffness, often resulting in death. 67 years ago, a six-year-old German boy was stricken by tetanus. His survival was de deemed 
Very unexpected and unlikely, he was placed in a storage room with some iron lung machines and presented at Grand Rounds. It is absolutely impossible for me tonight to divine a future had this young German boy succumbed to tetanus. But it is safe to conjecture the world of neurosurgery and the lives of many in this room, including my own, would be less rich. Our current understanding of cerebral blood flow may have been delayed. A world-famous neurological institute may have remained a regional hospital in the desert. An entire school of progressive neurosurgical thought may not have arisen. Many dozens of neurosurgical trainees may today lack some of the insight and wisdom they currently possess to pass on to future generations. Thousands of patients may have suffered from a delay in surgical innovations. A highly accomplished and loving family would have a very different phenotype. Many friends and colleagues of Robert Spetzler would be more intellectually and personally impoverished. My world and the world of many in this room would have missed a remarkable encounter with a multi-talented and gifted individual. How did this happen? How did this young boy in Germany, who nearly died at five years of age of tetanus, become what some may argue is the second best neurosurgeon in the country? <laughs> but arguably the best west of the Mississippi. His detractors, of which there are very few, probably credit his good fortune for his meteoric rise to the position that he's attained in his profession. And for all of his talents, good fortune really did play a role in this evolution of Robert Spetzler. He was born in Germany on November 13, 1944, the day he won what Warren Buffett has called the Great Genetic Lottery. He was born to an unusually talented family, raised by parents, August and Maria Spetzler, who were healthy, they were intelligent, well-educated, and they were determined to see their children be the same. His father, an intellectual, had earned a PhD in engineering and worked as a watch engineer. His mother, an optimist, taught the young Spetzlers to always recognize the bright side of things. August and Maria Spetzler's determination paid off and their dream came true. In addition to Robert, whose accomplishments you've heard about all night and are well known, his siblings have also reached the pinnacles of their chosen professions. Hartmut would become a geophysicist. Carl would earn a PhD in economics and lead a think tank. Herman was to be a rural healthcare administrator. Bertram, who's here with us, an orthopedic surgeon. And Gabriella, a teacher in special education. Robert Spetzler has had a fortuitous life, but as Thomas Jefferson once said, I'm a great believer in luck, and I find the harder I work, the more I have of it. So those who really know Robert know he achieved his accolades the old-fashioned way. He earned it with talent, an incredibly competitive spirit, compassion, and a joy of life, and most of all, a lot of damned hard work. Presidential addresses at our meetings are the most boring things anybody could ever attend, but the most memorable of all was given by Joe Maroon when he talked about life being a square where the various important parts of your life outlined on this square are depicted as a square. And in a kind of a mea culpa presentation, Joe admitted that his life was not squared up. It looked like this. I truly don't know any human being whose life is more balanced than Robert Spetzler. His professional life has been, I mean, you've heard about it all night long, and he's, he's received and earned every accolade a neurosurgeon could possibly have in his or her profession, and it's because of talent. He is an extremely talented human being. From childhood, Robert has had a passion for music. He turned the sound up and is an accomplished classical pianist. As a youngster, he actually would earn money giving piano lessons. Today, Robert still plays the piano. He does it with style and facility. As a youngster, Robert was an accomplished Boy Scout, and like all of his endeavors, he rose to the top, earning the Order of the Arrow. 
His early interest in the out of doors has continued throughout his life. His knowledge of the out of doors and his love for exploration of the natural world is absolutely amazing. He has always been a brilliant student. His interest in neurosurgery actually dates back to high school, believe it or not, where he actually wrote neurosurgery as his career goal in his yearbook. After graduating in 1963, coming from a very modest middle-class family, he had to go to a, a community college to help earn some money to pay for his way. So he spent a year at Illinois Valley Community College where he lived at home, saved money working three jobs. Decades later, he would be honored with the Outstanding Alumnus Award from that community college. After his first year, he transferred to Knox College in Gainsborough, I'm sorry, Galesburg, Illinois. And before graduating with honors in 1967 with a degree in biology and chemistry, Robert spent a year at the Free University of Berlin on a scholarship. But Robert's knowledge is not just stuff you learn in a book. The first time I ever walked into an operating room with him, I realized that he sees things in a fourth dimension. The positions he would put patients in, the, the, the approaches he would take to things was, was mind-boggling. And even to this day, Molly and I refuse to hike in Wyoming or to go backcountry skiing unless we're with Robert Spetzler because he always knows where he is and he always knows where he is when he's in somebody else's brain in a way that I've never seen before or since. Obviously, the physical side of his square is very well fortified. That's in large part due to the fact that he has an unquenchable competitive spirit. In fact, Robert is so competitive, he refuses to participate in any athletic activity he doesn't immediately excel at. And that's why this is the only known picture of Robert <laughs> playing golf. And you'll notice that he's wearing a tennis outfit. <laughs> but we just wish that Robert would act his age. label Robert as particularly religious, but he has a magnificent spirituality. And that spirituality is shared through his immense compassion for others. He's had a lifelong love of all living creatures, horses, dogs, and he's maintained that affection for animals throughout all of his life. But he also shows that affection with every single one of his patients. He may not remember their names, but he cares deeply, deeply about every one of them, and everyone is a special person to him. Everybody he's trained, he has compassion and thoughtfulness for, and cares genuinely about their career. The family and social side of his square obviously began in his early childhood with the wonderful family he grew up in, and he has maintained that same balance with his own family. And that is due to the fact that he has an incredible joy of life. But the greatest joy of his life is Nancy. Nancy deserves, and Robert would agree with me 100%, 60% of every accolade and every honor that Robert has ever had. And Nancy and Robert together have had two incredible kids who in turn married two absolutely fantastic people and they've been blessed with loving grandchildren. And finally, Robert has always been a loyal friend. All in this room and many others have been touched by this friendship.
In a complicated and challenging world, Robert Spetzler is an oasis of common sense, skill, and fortitude. No one outside my family has had as much influence on my career and my life. I have tried to emulate him in every way, and although he is making some changes in his career path and in his life, he will remain a role model for me, I know for many others who have benefited from his friendship and his mentoring. Robert, here's to you and all that you have done for so many. May you continue to be, as you've always been, forever young. May you Love you. Away. That is a tough one to follow. You got choked up at the end, didn't you? What, when a guy gets choked up, it gets me every, that's okay, it's okay, I like that, it's emotional. <laughs> I like the way I just called him out in front of everybody too. It's like, this is great. <laughs>